the last video, we looked at property testing via the fast check library. We saw how we can generate unit tests so that we can make sure we're covering all the edge cases in our code. In this video, I want to look at another use case where the capabilities of fast check are really, really handy. And that is when handling promises, specifically race conditions within promises. Let's take a look at an example here. So we've got a very simple React component here, and this is for tracking progress. It takes a get progress function that returns a promise of number. And then whenever we click this button, we try and update that progress. So we set loading to true, we get the progress, and then we just set the value of our progress to the new value. And then we set loading to false. To display that, we have this progress bar. Pretty straightforward. Whenever you click the button, we'll make a call to an API and we'll get the latest progress. And if you look at the test, you can see it's pretty straightforward. We have a number that we're using for local state, and then we have a mock get progress function, which will just increment that number by 10 each time. So we render our component, we find the button, we click it three times, and once the updating text has cleared, we'll be able to see that the progress value is 30. Now this seems pretty simple, but there is something that this test does not take into account. We're clicking the button three times, and each time we start a promise. And we assume that the promise will resolve in order because we override whatever value is set with the new value. If for some reason one of our API calls is much slower or much faster than one of the others, it's possible that our promises will not resolve in the same order that they were started, and then we won't have the correct value being displayed. Now FastCheck actually has a promise scheduler built into it, and we can use that to test. So let's update this test so that it uses FastCheck and so that it exposes the race condition that we might have. So we can start by importing FastCheck, and then you might recall from last week we used FastCheck Dot assert. Now last week we used fc.property, but this week we're going to use fc.async property. And this is because our callback is going to be async and we want to use fc.scheduler for this. Now we will have to pass fc scheduler an argument in just a sec, but let's uh, get our scaffolding set up here first. I'm going to copy our existing test into our block here. And remember, because we use this arbitrary fc scheduler here, we're going to get a scheduler in our callback. And so I'm just going to pass s here to represent the scheduler. And as you can see, this is a scheduler. OK, so what do we want to do with this scheduler? Well, first, instead of just creating a mock function here that is just kind of standalone, we actually want to use the scheduler and wrap this mock function. So what we're going to do instead is say f.schedule function and we'll pass it that callback. So now the scheduler knows about the behavior of our mock function and it will be able to control how long it takes for that promise to resolve and in what order it resolves if it's being called multiple times. So we're already passing our mock function here to our progress component. So we don't really have to do anything there. One thing that we do have to do though is tell the scheduler that we want to wait for all of these promises to resolve. So we're gonna do s dot wait all. Now there is a bit of complexity that we run into here. When we call wait all and these promises resolve, our progress component is actually going to change. It's going to need to re-render. And with the React testing library, when your component re-renders based on some behavior, you need to wrap that in a call to act. So I'm going to import the act function here from the React testing library, and we're going to await a call to act here, and we'll just wrap this all nicely like that. So now the React testing library will know to re-render our progress component when this promise here resolves. Now, if we're doing our waiting and our re-render here on line 17, we no longer have to wait for the loading text to be removed. So I'm gonna remove that call, and I'll remove that import as well. There's one other small thing that we need to do here, and this is because of the nature of fast check. You'll remember that fast check is actually gonna run this test multiple times, resolving these promises in different orders to see if it can find a particular order where it breaks. And so that means that within this one test block, we're going to be rendering multiple times. And so we need to make sure that we clean up the previous render before fast check starts a new one. So what we can do here is call a method on async property. The method is before each. And what we need to do is a little bit of cleanup before each new render. Thankfully, the React testing library gives us a cleanup method. As you can see from the description here, cleanup just unmounts React trees that were mounted with the render. So when we do this with the before each and ensures that each time our test runs, we have a clean slate to work from. So now that we have our test, let's go ahead and run this and see if it finds any problems. So we can run it with yarn test. All right, so let's take a look at this output. So we can see that the test failed 
and take a look at our counter example here. Remember, this shows us what behavior FastCheck did in order to make this test fail. And you can see that we had three calls to our task and they resolved with the values 20, 30, and 10 in that order. You can also see that the property failed after two tests, which probably means it passed on the first one, maybe when 30 was the last behavior. And so you can see that the last promise resolved with 10. In our actual HTML here, you can see that 10 is the value that's being displayed. And of course, find the text 30 failed entirely. Okay, so this test now has revealed a problem in our component. We're not properly handling promises that resolve in an unexpected order. So what do we want to do about this? This is where your specific use case takes over, right? Because there are a couple of different things you could do. One of the things we could do is disable this button if we're in the loading state. And now, if we run this test again with yarn test, we're gonna see something a little different. The test will still fail because the test no longer represents the behavior we expect. You can see that the test actually only called one task because the button was only clicked once. The reason for this, if we look back at our test, is because we don't resolve the promises until after we click the button three times. And so these second two clicks were on a disabled button. By disabling the button, we've essentially removed the race condition entirely. I guess what we could do is put the between each one of the button calls and now and now if we run the test we can see that it does pass disabling the button and then making sure our promises resolve between each is one way to do it there's another thing we can do though here which maybe is more relevant for our particular use case because we know progress really should only be going up in value we can check to see if the new value we receive from the promise is greater than the existing value and only update it if it is greater so I'm gonna remove the disabled attribute here and instead of setting the value to to just new value, what we can do is actually set value can take a function, a callback, and the callback will actually receive the old value, which is helpful for our comparison. And then whatever we return from this callback will be the value that we actually set. So we can do math.max and we can pass it the new value and the old value. And now we're only gonna set value to whichever one is higher. Let's go ahead and yarn test here again. And what we should see is our test is passing. So now our progress button will always resolve to 30 no matter what order our three promises resolve in. And if we wanted to be really sure that that's what's happening, we could do a log in here. So let's go ahead and add a console.log for old value and new value. And now if we run yarn test and you can see the test ran a bunch of times, sometimes the old value is greater, sometimes the new value is greater, but we always ended up with 30. So this was a quick look at how we can test for race conditions in our promises by using the fast check library. If you have other ways that you like to test test and to handle race conditions within your JavaScript, I would love to hear about those. So let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.